Hi, I'd like to welcome you to week three of the St. Aidan's Institute course on Anglican Theology. Now, I know the Christopher Hall book has been a challenging one for most of you to read, and I'm sorry for that. Uh, it's a very dense book that assumes uh, some knowledge on the parts of the reader before um, it's even read. However, in a course like this, it's really helpful because we don't want to spend all our time on the patristic writers, but we want to get a real good sense of of the flavor of who they were, what they were dealing with, and how those same issues really are applicable uh, in the life of the church today. And so this actually is a helpful book, so I would just encourage you to slog through it this one last week, uh, and then we'll move on to the next text, which will probably uh, be more amenable to um, reading and discussion. Now, the two questions we're dealing with this week are ones very much that were in the life of the early church and also are in the life of the church today. And by having a good understanding of how the early church addressed those issues and identified them and solved them, uh, we can go a long way to helping our generation understand them and address them equally well. The first question relates to Irenaeus, whom we've seen before, and his struggle with the Gnostics, which we have also seen before. Um, in this case, it's looking at how they interpret scripture. Now, the Gnostics were Christians, but they came to Christian faith with a, a Greek philosophical worldview. And they wanted their faith to fit within the context of that worldview. And, and that worldview included things like uh, a real disdain for anything related to the material world, uh, a desire to only really grapple with and, and be a part of the spiritual world. So things like a physical resurrection were seen as distasteful. Physical sacraments were seen as, as not really making a lot of sense to them. Anything in the physical realm was just inferior. And so when they look through scripture and they see how God is acting in human lives, human history, um, it doesn't fit their preconceptions because if the physical world is yucky and God is pure and perfect, then what on earth would God want, or why on earth would God want to have anything to do with anything on the earth? And so rather than change their, their preconceived notions, they try to change the way um, the faith is viewed so that the scripture better fits those notions. And one of the ways they did that was to really separate the Old Testament from the New and to say that the Old Testament God is different from the New Testament God. And they actually called the Old Testament God the Demiurge, this idea of being involved in human battles, uh, causing physical punishment to human beings. They didn't like any of that at all. And so they pushed hard for all of that to be seen as out of date, and that the New Testament God, the God of love, was the one to be understood. And so Irenaeus works his way through dealing with that and helping his um, followers to understand that the text stands on its own. We are not to interpret the text. It is to interpret us. And when you look at today's worldviews, where we take contemporary um, moral values, social values, this sense of consumerism, of entitlement, of anything goes, and try to force that back into the scriptures, it's really a very similar process that's being undertaken. So our grappling with this question is a good one. The second question this week um, relates to the understanding of church. And it's going to be an awkward one for us because we're going to see very strong cases made that the church must always be unified and that um, to break away is to presume a wisdom upon oneself that doesn't exist and that really just leads to folly. In the early church, that was very true. The context we're in today is a little different, though, and, and since most are in the Anglican, uh, of you are in the Anglican Church of North America, that poses problems because we have broken away from the Episcopal Church. And so the questioning may be a little uncomfortable, but it's good for us to grapple with because we will be asked these questions, and I have been asked some of these questions. And so really taking an honest look at how the early church addressed them and how we are addressing them, um, I think will help us find some vocabulary to describe what we're really grappling with and doing. So those are the questions for this week. It, it's our final time with Hall. Uh, which you probably will not miss, but it's very um, rich content for us to be working our way through. So uh, keep up with the good work. Uh, God bless you, and I'll see you in the classroom.